I'm going to try and repair this serving ladle. This is uh, something that belongs to a friend and she's asked me if I can try and repair it. It's a serving ladle made from uh, cow's horn. It originally had a wooden handle that was fixed on with this dowel here so um, I'm going to try and mould a plastic handle onto the end of this. So the first thing I need to do is just remove the stub of that dowel. So <coughs> I'm just going to use a junior hacksaw to cut that stub off and then I'm going to very carefully try and drill it out. Okay, that should be okay. Okay, so I cut the end off there and I'm just going to very carefully try and drill that out. But to avoid crushing the or cracking the the material, the horn, I'm just going to wrap that in a bit of cloth. That will help, the, help me to grip it in my vise without destroying it. OK, that's good. Now, with the drill on very, very slow, so I'm going to adjust the speed right down on my drill to very carefully try to drill out the stub of that dowel. And I'm using a drill that's slightly smaller than the diameter of the dowel. going quite well. Now my intention is to glue in a piece of this threaded rod, glue that in with epoxy <coughs> and then I'll build a new handle on this metal stub. That's good. So, yeah, I've got an inch now of, of, of uh, rod inside there. Okay, so I'm going to mix up my epoxy resin. I'm going to daub some of that inside the hole. down to the bottom. The trick here is to try and make it so that when this the rod goes in there won't be any air gaps. So I'm going to try and put as much of this glue in as I can. And we should find that when I actually insert the rod that some of it will squeeze out. Okay, now the other thing is to just coat the end of the rod so that the glue is in intimate contact with all of the little crevices and cracks in the thread there. Okay, now I just need to leave that to set up. Okay, to help this set in place, this is a tiny bit delicate, but I'm actually just going to put that rubber band onto the end there. tension of that rubber band, assuming it all stays in place, will just help that spindle to stay in tight against the glue. So I've just got my threaded rod glued into the end of the, the stub there, held in place with the rubber band just to keep it tight. This is supposedly a four to five minute epoxy, but I suspect as the weather's a little bit cold it will take longer than that. But the advantage of mixing up more than I need is that I can come back and test whether this this leftover has started to cure and that will give me an idea of whether that's ready to do the next stage. Okay, we can see that glue there now is very nicely set hard and yeah, there's a good, a good bond. You can hear actually that the, the, the rod is glued solid into the shaft there. Just, I'm just going to leave that overnight to set up completely. I'll leave it in a warm place 
just really so that that glue completely hardens um, before I do any more work on it. But the next thing I can start work on is making a mould which is going to take the plastic to be formed around that. Okay, so this is my completed mould. It's made of just soft wood and bits of scrap timber that I've picked up from various places in my garage. You'll notice it's very rough and ready. That really doesn't matter because we're going to be pressing the, the raw plastic into here and after I've finished moulding it I'm going to shape it by hand using planes and, and bladed tools anyway. So it doesn't matter what the surface finish of the moulded item is like. So I can afford to just make this a really quick and dirty mould. So how it's going to work is this. I will heat up my plastic in my sandwich toaster. I'll place a slab of plastic into the bottom of the mould there. The ladle will then be dropped on top and it goes in like that. There's a, a nail there to stop it going further than it ought to. So that will go into place there. Another, another slab of plastic will go on top. This piece will be clamped tight down there. That actually constrains the bowl of the um, ladle. And then finally, this piece here will just drop in the top there and will be clamped down tight. And that will compress the plastic and cause it to extrude around all of the little gaps and, and crevices and grip onto really tight onto that um, threaded bar. So, then that will be clamped up and left to set for half an hour. And then hopefully, when I take it all apart, I'll end up with a, a handle on that moulded round the neck of that ladle and it'll just be a big big rectangular block of plastic moulded to that shaft. I've got my HDPE moulding station all set up and ready now for remanufacturing the ladle handle here. So, and I've practiced a few times getting that in there. My sandwich toaster here is just coming up to temperature. And I'm actually going to reuse three of these sheets that I've melted before. I was originally trying to make a massive big sheet of, of HDP by welding these together in the hope that I would be able to make a canoe out of it, but actually that project um, didn't come to fruition. So I'm going to reuse these tonight to remanufacture the ladle handle. So my separator sheet goes on. My HDPE goes in. And I think I probably only need two of those. And I'll stack them up together. And another separator sheet on top. And there. I'll just leave it to heat up. While that's heating up, I'll just point out I've, I've got all my clamps ready. I've got clamps here ready for clamping the toaster shut should I need them. I've got everything ready because it's only a fairly short working time for this HDPE once it's melted. OK, that's another couple of minutes of melting. Let's see where we're at now. Now you will notice I'm working without gloves here actually, which I don't recommend, but I can get away with this because my hands are very dry and even though this is hotter than boiling water, I can touch it and OK, it hurts, but, um, but as long as I work with a, a reasonable amount of care for my fingers, I don't need to worry too much about burning myself. As I say, I don't recommend you try that, but it's a risk I'm happy to take. Very sticky stuff this. And I'm going to cut it into strips because these strips are about the right width to go into my mould. So, now I've got my pieces more or less the right size, and as you can see I can, I can just about pick that up with a bit of care. It's starting to set again now, so I'm just going to get that back on there in four separate pieces. Now, I think we'll just put the extra bit on there as well in case we need it. Intact separator sheet on top, and heat. And those bits there are spare. They can be reused, recycled in a future project. Unfortunately I've destroyed my uh, separator sheet now, but not to worry. Okay, I'm just going to use a hot air blower gun now to warm up the mould. 
I don't want to scorch the wood but I do want that to be warm so that when the plastic hits it it doesn't set or shrink immediately. So here we go. So my first piece of plastic goes into the mould and I jam that down as best I can. Critically I need to make sure that that end is available so that piece can go in there as well. And jam that down as well. There we go. Next in goes that bit and is clamped in place. Okay, that's good. Next, another piece of plastic. To work fairly fast here because this will set quicker than I would like it to really. So another piece of plastic goes on top. And just jam that down. And finally, one more piece in the top. Okay. One more bit in the end there. I'm already running into difficulties with the setting of the stuff, but let's get it jammed in there and see what we end up with. So that goes on top now, and now I need to clamp that down really hard. And this is the bit that hopefully will bring it all together. Okay, clamping seems to be working, although it is spreading the mould as well. One more clamp on the top there to bring the sides together and hopefully that will have formed a solid chunk of plastic inside there but we won't know now for about half an hour until I can prise that apart okay this has been cooling down now for um, probably a couple of hours let's take it apart and see if it worked So, do you know what? That looks pretty good. So, at the moment, that looks pretty horrible. It's just a big solid block of ugly plastic on there. But, it's moulded very nicely around the shaft of the thing. It feels nice and solid and straight. And there's plenty of material there for me to work with. So I'm just going to plane that down to shape and size. But, <coughs> critically, I can't see any voids or bubbles or gaps in there. <clears throat> so um, that's a good result. So tomorrow I'm going to start shaping that into a nice new handle. So it's the day after moulding and this plastic's now set really nice and hard and it's ready to be shaped into a handle. I had actually intended to um, put a bolt on the end of this, this handle but the plastic has gripped so nicely to the metal thread that actually I've just cut that off flush and I'm just going to grind it smooth so that it's you'll be still be able to see a bit of metal on the end there but it won't stick out. So I've just got a final little bit of finishing to do on the grinder which I'm going to do very very carefully to make sure I don't touch the horn of, um, of the bowl. Okay, so this is the finished object now, and it's met pretty much all of my expectations for this project. The handle is bonded very nicely to the stub of the original bowl. It's reasonably smooth, there's no great big gaps or bubbles, it's nice to hold, it's got no sharp corners. I'm actually very happy with that, so that's a, um, that's a broken item that's been repaired and given a new life with recycled HDPE.